Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Just Run by October Factory. This is a two to six player game that takes roughly about 45 minutes to about 90 minutes to play, and it plays from ages 14 and up. And in the game Just Run, you're going to be picking a scenario to go through. And uh, basically what's happened is the world is kind of uh, overrun by zombies, and there's multiple choices, but we'll just talk about one of them, I suppose. Uh, you're attempting to escape. The helicopter has been called, but unfortunately there's only so much room in the helicopter for some people to escape and so you're going to move from one tile to the next on the board trying to find the exit then the exit tile is only going to actually have one of them will actually let you get out and if you can do so you'll get on the helicopter and escape and there's only so many people who can escape in the game there is cooperative semi-cooperative and competitive game modes in this game with tons of different variation on difficulty and skill that you can add to it if you'd like this is a game all about utilizing your actions well but trying to avoid the hordes of zombies that are coming at the end of every turn to attack you and basically contaminate you and make you become a zombie along with them. Will you escape? Will you just run and make it out of the exit gate before you get yourself turned into some creamy zombie pasta? Or will you be left uh, on the helicopter while your other uh, friends and family are stuck down below attempting to find their own means of escape? Find out in the game Just Run. We'll go into setup, how it's played, and then of course our review. The basic setup for the game Just Run is pretty simple. There are going to be five start tiles and five exit tiles, and you'll place them to make a five by seven grid, seven across and five down. Make sure you flip up the start tiles, make sure the doors are going to the right, and then the exit tiles are five spaces afterwards, and you're going to have them face down with the door side facing the entrance side of the start tiles. Place one search card at the end of every exit. These are cards that you can get when your character reaches one of those exit tiles. Go ahead and then give out uh, all the player requirements. Uh, in this case here, you'll give the start player the just run token. You're going to give every single player a player token, as well as a run token or flea token, I should say, a contamination marker, 6 HP, and 5 separate die of their color. You're also going to give them a player aid and a number of scavenger cards based on the mode. In this case here, we're playing a four player game and in which case you're gonna get seven scavenger cards. Uh, everybody will get those cards and the rest of them will just get removed from play. You won't need them after that. These are going to be your starting cards here. A bunch of extra tokens that you can set aside if you're not utilizing them. There's going to be tokens that represent dropped items at HP as well as doors. There's blocked doors, locked doors, busted down doors, and open doors. There's a set number of dice as well. You'll have door dice. You're going to have contamination dies and your or die and you're going to have one of these guys here. This is a die that can make your items break. For every character that's not being played, you can set aside their die, but you will leave the white die because these are going to be used for the zombies. Make yourself a big fat zombie pile, as well as a zombie horde pile, and everything else can be moved alongside from the game. Make sure that you've chosen the specific scenario that you want to play, and there's multiple of them. I think there's about six here that I have, and we're going to show you the one with Get Out. Now, each of these have their own specific storyline, as well as recommended variations of what you should do in order to play this. And this one here just says escape with at least one HP point before the chopper fills up. And in this case, the chopper's only got three people. Uh, it tells you, okay, this is a cooperative game. It's a long play game. The zombies are fast, which means they get an extra action, uh, safer, all for one, and solo. And each of those are discussed kind of in the rule book what happens. And you're going to have a handy dandy little order of play, as well as actions marker card that you can utilize throughout the game. After that, make sure that you've got your room deck shuffled and set next to each other in your search and supply deck, and everything else can be moved aside if you're not using it, and you can begin. Well, let's talk about how to play. Just Run is a competitive slash cooperative tile placement game that's all about using your actions to move from one tile to the other to get to the exit and escape with only one of these exits being safe to do so. When you're going to start off, you're going to look at the order of play and you have this scavenging phase. You'll gather your survival gear, which in this case is your scavenged cards, and uh, then you're going to go ahead and check to see... Uh, what cards you can attach. Now, attaching cards is pretty simple. If they're black, they're set aside, they're specifically by themselves. Uh, and if they have a border, so in this case, this one does, has a yellow border, you can attach this to another card with a yellow border. So in this case here, sharp scissors can be attached to a baseball bat to make a spiked club. And you can put these together. And whenever you do that, because you have a limited number of inventory space, in this case, it's five, unless you get something like a, oh, this is a grubby backpack here. Uh, you're gonna check to see the highest valued uh, item. In this case, it's a two. And if you attach these two together, this is gonna be worth two. It won't be the two and the one making three, it's just gonna be the highest one of the two. So this would be a two here. 
Um, and there's other ones you can combine as well. In this case, I can combine an extension cord with some duct tape. And if I do so, it's going to give me a repair kit. And you can utilize this to do certain things in the game. So you're going to be kind of making your starting inventory at the beginning of the game. Anything that you can't utilize, it has to go away. So you're only going to have a certain limited number of space. But if you have something like a backpack here, this one will give you a plus two additional inventory space. And it doesn't have the inventory space of its own. So that will actually put you up to plus seven. So everybody's going to kind of make their own starting equipment. Uh, some equipment is going to give you a bonus attack, a ranged melee attack, it'll give you a flail kind of an attack, it'll let you bash down doors, etc, etc. And then the rest of the things that you're not going to utilize, or literally cannot utilize, can just be removed. After you've done your starting, uh, and then you're going to roll for the first player. So basically you roll the die, whoever gets the higher roll is going to become the zombie player. Most person who recently turned into a zombie is the first player. You can kind of decide how you want to do that. And then you place the player tokens in the starting row, beginning with the first player. So if you're playing a uh, four player game in this case, I would just have these four players out and you can't be on the same space. But if you were playing a total of six players, you could have the sixth player be on any space that has a player already on it. So you can kind of have a little bit of a more cooperative aspect of the game. But in general, you're not going to start in the same space unless you're playing that six player variant. And uh, after that, then you are going to move on to the escape phase. Uh, the escape phase is going to take place in two turns. You have the survivor turns and then you're going to have the zombie turns. Uh, basically, each player is going to take two actions and you'll start with the first player and you'll go clockwise. And then the first player token will move to the left after they've all done so. And then the zombies will attack any players in the same room or they're going to move one space and then zombies are going to spawn in rooms with handprints. So, on your turn, there are a certain number of actions. On the back of this card, it'll tell you what you can do. For instance, uh, you can attack a creature. You basically choose, a, you, you'll, you'll, you'll start with a certain number of dice that you can roll to just simply attack with. You can add weaponry to give you additional die, and you'll roll to fight monsters. And basically, whenever you roll, based on the number of monsters in the room, maybe there's three monsters, you have them roll, and then you'll combine highest die to next highest, to next highest, to next highest. And there's certain rules as to how ties work. Mainly zombies are gonna be winning in ties unless you have something like a flail action. But you'll be removing zombie units when you win and you'll be taking wounds when you lose. And when you lose, you can also be contaminated. You'll turn your little die, your little token here from white to yellow. And at the beginning of your turn, every other turn after that, if you're infected, you'll roll the infection die. And if you get the infection symbol, you'll take damage, which is going to kill you. <laughs> So you can attack with a variety of different weapons in the game, and it's going to be based on how you combine them. Uh, the next thing you can do is you can bash a door or a wall. As long as you have a way to do so, sometimes there are going to be equipment, sometimes there are going to be weapons, items, you have a little door symbol on them or tell you you can do so, you'll roll dice. You'll roll against the door. If you roll higher than the door, you can bash it open. And there are multiple different door symbols. You're going to have locked doors open doors, bash doors, and block doors. Bashing a door will let you bash through pretty much anything. Unlocking a door is separate, and that's usually going to involve you unlocking a door with a locked symbol, but bashing is always gonna work for everything, and zombies will do that as well throughout the game. Uh, another thing you can do is well, you can check a door. Checking a door isn't actually moving in, it's just saying what, uh, whether or not the door is gonna be open or not. So you can go ahead, and so instead of just bashing it open, you can check to see. You'll roll this door die, bam. That's an open door. Great, open door means I've got a room here that I'm going to be able to place down in any kind of combination I want as long as it doesn't break the rules, and I can place down a door there. Uh, another action is I can move into a room. Bam, I can just walk into a room. It's pretty simple. Uh, I can search a room. Searching a room is either going to uh, basically allow you to look through any of the supply cards and take one of them, although you're not going, you're gonna get the choice of choosing them, but after players start taking them, there's gonna be less choice and it might not be what you want. The other option is to simply draw from the top of the search deck. Search decks could have things like antivirals that will remove your contamination and heal you. They could have things like a chainsaw, which is super powerful. And then there's also going to be, oops, <laughs> there's going to be event cards. When you draw an event card, you're simply going to do it, read whatever it says, and hopefully it will benefit you. But most of the time, it's going to be some catastrophic event that's not so great. Like, you found an escape. Place one crawl space marker in your room. Oh, and in the other adjacent room, if the target is unknown, draw and place a new tile. 
and the t crawl space passages can be passed between the two rooms in any direction, and zombies can also use the crawl space. Actually, not so bad. Most of them are actually pretty bad. In fact, this is one of the first ones I've seen that isn't terrible. <laughs> but yeah, you're gonna get events as well sometimes. Sometimes you'll have cards that will combine with other cards. Sometimes it's gonna be very specific things like a backpack or a gun or whatever. So searching is useful in certain instances. You can also use an item. Some items will allow you to spend them as an action, or it will cost, it will be a free action. It will tell you on the item. You'll spend that and do whatever it says. And of course you can uh, combine, pick up, or trade an item. These are all things that take an action. Some things take two actions, which is your entire turn. You can build a barricade, or you can flee if you have a flee token. This is a flea token you're gonna get one per game. You can spend it on your turn to move from any room with any number of zombies in it to an adjacent room without having to suffer any attacks or penalties. Usually zombies will get a unique surprise attack or an attack of opportunity every time you take an action in a room with a zombie or more zombies. Three zombies in a room and you choose to move out of the room, three surprise attacks of opportunity. Yeah, not so great. With a flea token though, you can avoid all that. Uh, things that you can take that take zero actions. At the end of your turn, you can choose to drop any items. Um, defend against any attack is also free. And after you're done with your two normal actions, you can also choose to combine, pick up, or trade any item with any player in the room. So you're gonna be able to utilize all the new cards that you've gotten at the end of your turn and you've taken your, your actions. So you can't really always use all the specific things that you get early, unless they're individual items, but you can combine them at the end to make them even more powerful. When an item is combined to, if you lose it for any reason or it gets destroyed, it's gonna go along with um, any attachments to it. If it gets broken, that item and the attachment will also get broken. Speaking of which, whenever you choose to use an item and it's successful or unsuccessful, it doesn't matter, you're gonna be rolling this die along with it. And if you roll this nasty repair symbol, the item will get turned to the side, meaning it is no longer in use. It cannot be used until it is repaired. And there are cards in the deck that will let you repair items. And after you've done any of those two actions or an action that takes two actions, you move on to the next player and they'll take their actions. And then they're gonna have the zombie turn. The zombies attack any players in the same room. And they'll attack just like another player would attack. Each zombie gets a die. They'll roll for each of the zombies to the players. There's certain rules as to how they attack and which characters they choose. Uh, but if they do not have a target, then they're going to simply move. They will move into a space that is adjacent uh, to the closest player. And if they get into that room, that's good for the zombies. So they get some surprise attacks if they don't get killed. And then finally, they're going to spawn. Zombies will spawn on any rooms with handprints. These handprints here indicate that zombies will be spawning at the end of the round on the zombie turn. Basically what happens is you place these individual zombies on each space with a handprint at the end of the round, at the end of the zombies turn. And these guys are just gonna start moving into the board towards the exits that will affect the players. Uh, and that's basically the idea of the game. Now I've kind of dumbed it down because there's quite a lot of different variation to the game. When you drop items down, you're gonna be placing these tokens to represent which items you've dropped and where. You can gain additional health up to six whenever you gain health. There are all the different types of doors and how they're used to unlock or how to bash them through and whatnot. There's certain cards that will let you change the layout of the board. Only one of these exits is actually an exit and it will tell you on there, but they're also gonna spawn zombies when you reveal them. You'll actually roll a die and based on the die that you, uh, the pips that you roll on the die, four four zombies are going to be there when you reveal that door. So the zombies at the exits are going to be very scary and you have to try and deal with them as well. And like I said, you'll get search cards when you enter those rooms, which could be very useful. Hopefully a chainsaw. And like I said, depending on the variation of the game, you can win by exiting the area before your opponent, your, your other players. Now this is kind of a cooperative element too, because sometimes you can't win alone. But we'll talk about all that in my review of the game, Just Run, which I basically described to you as it stands. So Just Run is a survival horror game that is uh, got a lot of variation to it. You could be playing cooperatively until you're not. You could be playing competitively to make sure that you're one of the few people that make it out to the escape pad or the helicopter pad. But it all comes down to how zombies spawn, how the doors are being placed, where the rooms are going to be located, what type of doors are attached to the rooms, and of course any event cards that might pop up in the game. It's very seldom in this game where you're not going to want to try and help somebody to help your own benefit of getting out or escaping. Most of the time doors are going to be locked 
blocked or blocked and you're gonna have to try and kind of finagle your way around certain areas or utilize your weapons to bash through a door to get to where you need to get. There's certain rules for bashing too as to how that works and of course that you cannot bash through an exit tile. You have to actually go through the correct one and you'll have to actually fight the zombies that are there. You're not gonna simply have to be able to like run through them. There's certain rules as to how all of that works and each of them is kind of detailed in the different types of variations that you have based on the different scenarios that you are playing. Uh, this game is intense. It's one of those games where you're constantly having to move. You're constantly trying to get to one location or another. The other things are going to be in your way, blocking your path. You're going to try and avoid backtracking if you can, deciding if you should bust through a door that is already open with zombies in it to try and get around them to take those surprise attacks, or do you want to try and bust through the wall? Or maybe you don't have an item to bust through and you have to actually search through the deck in order to find that one specific item that's going to help you bust through the wall to get to the next side and avoid the horde of zombies that are coming for you. Zombies typically can be barricaded against so that you can stop, they can be stopped. You can't, uh, okay, you can't get through this area now. I've barricaded it. Or in this case here, we have this gray character. We've got a horde coming. You can actually barricade the areas at a cost of two actions. But as zombies gather, they'll start to multiply. And when you have enough zombies in a room, five being the amount, you know, that's as many as you can have in a room, it will form a horde. And when Horde moves, they kind of don't care about barriers and blockades and all that. They will bash through them, and then on the next turn they can get through. So you're going to have to start making wise choices as to how you want to deal with them. Because even if you do block one side of a door, that doesn't mean that the next Horde isn't going to bust, bust, bust through the other. And you have to kind of make those wise choices before it's too late. This is all about it. This is all a game of chance, as well as steep strategy as to where and when you choose to move. Can you cooperatively get somebody to like want to come back and help you? That might be something that's important. And what do you have to offer? Maybe there you have a very spicy chainsaw, but you're not going to escape, uh, but you'll be willing to trade that chainsaw with a player who maybe would bust through a few zombies to let you get through the game, which I of course would try and do. What I really like about this game too is the idea of being able to hold more things. Some players are going to start with a little bit more advanced stuff than others, but they have the likelihood of just as much of being stuck in a certain area and requiring the assistance of other players at the detriment to their own well-being as well. The contagion aspect too. You're not very likely to take contagion damage, but you can, and it's a way that you can lose the game, and you'll have to be searching for these little serums along the way throughout the game in order to do so. You're not very likely to run into a locked or blocked door, I'd say about two and six, but it does happen, and when it happens, it can be at the worst possible time, just like items breaking. Only one side of the six can make your item break, but that can be the difference between busting through a door next time or, or not being able to use that item and have to search for a repair kit. Or worst case scenario, Jimmy's got a repair kit. He's a tile away. He'll help you, but it's going to cost you your lucky flamethrower or something like that. So you have to kind of be social in this game as well. Uh, I've played games that are kind of similar to this, but this one's kind of unique in the sense of how the doors work, where you can position certain things, how you can actually get through areas where normally in other games you can't, but there is a certain cost to it, and the fact that there's so much variety in the game just run. Let's go over some of the things here. First of all, the artwork. There's a little bit of artwork throughout the game. Uh, this is a prototype, so I don't know if there's going to be more or not, so I guess you have to look at the campaign to see for yourself, but all the items are really well done. They really look nice, and they work as you connect them together. It'd be kind of cool to see a way to make them connect the items you can like put an item on top of the two cards that you connect to show the connected item I don't know if it's actually worth it or not visually it would be kind of cool um, the doors and labs are all kind of blank because you're going to be basically putting a bunch of stuff all over them so it's not super needed but it could have been cool to have like the secret lab have a little bit more detail on it or the reception area or the atrium to kind of have it more like like the house on the haunted hill or betrayal at the house on the haunted hill I think that would have been pretty cool with this game all the cards are easy to read, easy to understand. This is how much it weighs. This is how much bonus attack you get. And this is what the item is and what it can do and whether or not it can bust through a door. And then of course, the sides dictate if it can be combined. The fact that there are unique different types of events that take place are super cool. And thematically, this game works very well. It's frantic, it's nerve wracking. You wanna to work together, but you don't wanna to work together. And depending on the scenario, it can be either to your detriment or to your aid if you do do so. But there's always gonna be a cost to everything that you do in this game. The dice rolling combat's pretty cool. If you like risk-based combat, it's basically like that, but you can kind of choose when and how to get into combat and whether or not you wanna increase your odds based on the items that you have in your inventory. 
Sometimes you get a bad luck, a bad like run of bad luck. You'll get a locked door, a blocked door, there's a horde of zombies behind you, and yeah, you might die in this game. It's a thing that could happen. It's kind of like that realism of the zombie apocalypse where not everything's gonna be to your advantage, but if you have helpful allies or have something to offer, there's always a chance you can escape the game successfully and get out to that exit gate. So it's all about being social as well when those times of bad luck come into play. Overall, this is a fun game. I really enjoyed this one here. I think if they sparsed up the rules a little bit, made it more like direct and clear, and of course, this is all prototypes, so uh, I'm sure most of the stuff is going to be settled with. I really enjoyed this game. This is one of those games I definitely play on a live stream. It's one of those games that's gonna show a lot of table presence at conventions, at game conventions, all of these, like, you know, like you know, your local game shop and whatnot. People are gonna be like, what are you doing? What is all this? Why is there so many zombies coming at you? And it's gonna want them to, want them to take a look at this game and wanna play this game. And that's for certain what happened when my guests came over when we were playing this game as well. Wow, what's that? That looks cool. And I think it does a good job of that. Overall, Just Run is a solid zombie action management game that if you enjoy combining items and want something just a little bit different than what your normal zombie tile placement game is like, then this is gonna be definitely the one. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Just Run. If you're interested in picking up the game, there's a link down below in the description where you can take a look at the game for yourself. You can also go ahead and check out the website unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Our live streams every Wednesday and Sundays at 6.30 p.m. PST. Times may be scheduled to change on Twitch. And if you'd like, you can go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe to this video. Let us know what you guys think about this game. Is it something you'd pick up? Why or why not? And to see more of our videos, of course, that bell notification button with the subscribe definitely does help. So you can see us show more indie games on Kickstarter, just like this one here. All right, guys, that's all I got for this time. As always, I look forward to just running with you next time.